Mario. How you guys doing? Welcome aboard the next video. Today we're going to discuss the rise and fall of THQ. This is a historic look at THQ as a company. How they rose to where they were and how they fell and where they are today. So let's go ahead and get started. THQ. In 1989, a company named Trinity Acquisition Corporation was founded in New York as a shell company in order to raise money at the time for a unknown venture of some sort. In about a year later, in April of 1990, the former co-founder of LJN, Jack Friedman, who ended up investing $1 million and setting up shop in Calabasas, California, thus starting THQ, or Toys Headquarters. It should also be noted that LJN stands for Norman J. Lewis's initials backwards. He was a man that hired Jack Friedman as a sale representative back in the 1960s. LJN is also responsible for some of the worst NES games we have ever known. Games like Jaws. Remember that monstrosity if you're old enough? <laughs> that game was ridiculous. Any of the Back to the Future games, they were absolutely terrible. I think the first one was the worst. I've heard many people say that Back to the Future 2 and 3 were more playable than the first one, but they were still terrible games. The sad thing is, um, they did a game called Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure that was also based off of the movie, which is a front of the great one. Is a really, it's like a cult classic now. I love that movie. But anyways, uh, Keanu Reeves is amazing. Um, they did a video game on Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, and in almost every list I could find with different people making, giving their own opinions on the worst NES game of all time, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure has always been somewhere in the top three of most lists that I've seen. So it's considered one of the worst games of all time. Now this would, this company really, um, LJM really, double down on making games that were based off of movies. They were always terrible. So let's go ahead and move on. In uh, September of 1990, THQ acquired Broderbund's video game division. Just so you guys know, this is actually the company that um, created the Prince of Persia franchise. The first one being made in 1989 for the Apple II. following year, THQ actually released their very first game called Peter Pan and the Pirates in January of 1991 on the NES. Even though many of us know it as THQ, the company would sometimes present his name in this form and fashion that we're not familiar with on their video games box art and their manuals from time to time. Now, of course, also in the same year as the, first, the release of their very first game, THQ agreed to be acquired by Trinity Acquisition Corporation. This was in order to do a stock swap, which was valued at approximately $33 million. This came with THQ shareholders ending up holding on to 51.7% of the shares to this new entity. Now, of course, the THQ name was retained and Friedman was announced to be the company's president. THQ acquired the video game developer Black Pearl Software of Chicago. Now in 1994, THQ completely got out of making toys for children and focused entirely and solely on video game creating and making. Also at that same time, they finally decided to drop this stupid piece of crap off of their logo. Jack Friedman, who had always been interested in creating a toy company, uh, ended up leaving THQ. And as we know, he was the one that created or co-founded LJN and THQ. They would not have existed without him. And in 1995, he decided to leave the company to start a new one. 
Now something that I should add is that Jack Friedman was a brilliant man. He was intelligent beyond reason. He was truly an entrepreneur and just a really amazing individual. He went on to co-found the toy manufacturer Jack Pacific at the same year that he left THQ. That company he co-founded after leaving THQ, Jack Pacific, actually today has a net worth of $800 million as of right now. Now he was the CEO of this company that he newly started all the way up until his retirement in April of 2010. Of course the man is now deceased, so condolences to that. So going back into THQ, in 1997 it was reincorporated as a Delaware corporation and acquired the San Diego video game developer Pacific Coast and Light. Going into the year 2000, THQ yet again changed their logo into the logo that we are more familiar with today than the one that has been shown you where they changed it earlier, or even the one before that. Most of us are familiar with this one more than any of the other ones. Now the reason why they changed it to this in 2000 was because it was a new millennium and they wanted a fresh look and design to their logo. For the next 11 years, they're going to stick with this logo and just hold on to it. In February of 2000, THQ was facing a class action lawsuit over a federal security law violation. Evidently, THQ forgot to disclose some informational material. In September of that same year, they ended up trying to expand their capabilities. By doing this, they decided to actually obtain Volition, who were located in Champaign, Illinois. Now, Volition, a lot of you may know, uh, did basically destroy all human series. Uh, which was a fantastic series, we all love playing those. And if you haven't heard of that series, you definitely need to give it a try. Now, since the time they started actually obtaining all these individuals, um, such as Volition, their studio actually grew into um, 11 across the globe. By doing this, this allowed them to actually create, design, and publish games across every platform of gaming, including PC, all across the board, year-round, basically always making money. They had studios such as Relic Entertainment, Blue Tongue Mountain, Juice Games, Chaos Studios, Vigil Games, and if I remember correctly, Vigil Games was famous for the Dark Siders series. Uh, definitely another series that you guys should check out. The first one I heard was much better than the second, but I'd still give the second one a run for its money. And they also worked on games for next generation consoles that were going to come out as well. Now THQ acquired Vigil Games in 2006. On May 10th of 2007, THQ actually announced their most profitable fiscal year, accumulating approximately a net worth of over $1 billion. On March of 2008, THQ announced the development of the world's first cheerleading game using the Wii Balance Board. Yes, you actually heard that correct. I don't understand why that exists. On November 3rd, 2008, THQ closed five of its internal property studios. Paradigm Entertainment, Mass Media Incorporated, Locomotive Games, and Sandblast Games. Then in 2009, we hit a major recession, and I bet you can guess what happened there. Have you ever heard of Circuit City? How about Blockbuster? You ever heard of that one? <laughs> I actually have a Dark Alliance 2 on the Xbox, which I recently found with the Blockbuster case. Pretty interesting. And uh, side note, I also found a case, uh, a replaceable case for it. Complete. Glad to finally have Dark Alliance 2. Let's go ahead and keep going on with THQ. Well, anyways, uh, THQ had huge declines in sales, causing them to have to cut over $220 million from annual costs by 2010. Before the recession hit, THQ was neck and neck with their competitor Activision. Due to the recession, THQ's games, despite getting really great reviews, sold very poorly. During that same time, THQ's kids' games were also selling very badly. And this was during a time period where kids went from purchased games over to free online video games. 
This whole situation caused them to actually back out of creating children's video games. Just remember that part. They stopped making kids video games. Remember that. That's going to play a key part here in a second. With shares down about 86% and a market value of only $173 million, it now became possible that a THQ could be acquired by another company. In March of 2009, THQ spun off Heavy Iron Studios and Incinerator Studios as independent companies. They also announced that they were going to try and sell a game developer that they also had in their pocket, Big Huge Games. Two months later, 38 studios ended up purchasing Big Huge Games. In August of 2009, THQ ended up obtaining Midway Games. Oh, crap. <laughs> Midway Game Studios, <laughs> San Diego for $200,000. Well, that's not good. The sale included all assets except for the TNA Impact. I'm trying to remember what that is. I know I've played it before. I can't quite put my finger on it. Was that a good game? Okay. Um, should probably have done research on that. We'll get to that. Anyways, in August of 2010, THQ unveiled the UDRAW game tablets. If you have never heard of this before, you're not alone. I didn't know this existed until I did the research. <laughs> I had no idea this monstrosity exists. It was overpriced, overbudgeted, and under-advertised. Hence why it was, a lot of us probably never even heard of it in the first place. Not to mention they withdrew making children's games, for Christ's sakes. So what the hell are they trying to do with this heck of crap? It's so, oh my god. <laughs> no. Anyways, on January 12th of 2011, THQ revealed their new logo, and in March the same year, suffered a 26% stock drop after releasing the game Homefront. A oh, damn. <laughs> I had a copy of this game. Uh, when it first came out, I had a copy of it. Um, I waited a little while, and it didn't take long before the prices on them just dropped. And they were selling them for dirt cheap. Uh, I actually got a copy of that game. You know, it... it how do I put this? It wasn't exactly a bad game, but you couldn't really call it good either. It needed a lot of work to be a good game, and it wasn't quite on the verge of being bad. It had something going for it, but it just didn't quite hit it on the head. In my opinion, it wasn't too bad, but it definitely could have been way better than it was. Even even reviewers were saying... <laughs> like, I remember this, I remember this. Even reviewers were saying it was the game we never wanted. <laughs> I was just laughing so hard when I saw that. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> but anyways, due to the stock drop THQ experience, they had to close off Chaos Studios who made the game. On July 27, 2011, THQ ended up dropping their long-running franchise, Red Faction, due to the poor reception of Red Faction Armageddon. No, God! No, God, please, no! 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 That made that that kind of hurt me a little bit, to be honest. No. In the following year, more of their studios ended up being shut down and liquidated in order to save themselves from financial ruin. On November 13, 2012, THQ actually announced to the public that they defaulted on a loan from Wells Fargo that was worth 50 million dollars. That's a lot of dent. Which basically this means that they were on the verge of bankruptcy. Due to the stock market drops, THQ was forced to delay the release date on Company of Heroes 2 and Metro Last Light and move them over to March of 2013. On November 29, 2012, THQ partnered with Humble Bundle to launch the Humble THQ Bundle in hopes to raise more money. In my opinion, more companies should do stuff like that because people tend to buy um, cheap things in bulk. Like, I'm one of those people. I will straight up, if I see a really good deal, I'll take it. Um, if I like, you know, freaking eight games and I can get them for like 10 bucks, I'll buy them right there. Like, <laughs> you, you will see that happen a lot if more companies end up doing that. Anyway, by December 12th of 2012, THQ nearly sold 
800,000 bundles, making roughly around $5 million. THQ President Jason Rubin also made a purchase spending $11,050 on the bundle as well. Now I am no professional when it comes to finances and all this stuff, I am not, but I think the whole thing that went on here was they were trying to make enough money or raise enough money so they wouldn't have to child, uh, so that way they wouldn't have to file under Chapter 13 bankruptcy. Because from my understanding, if they did Chapter 13 bankruptcy, then they would be left with that debt and they would be trying to pay it off for the rest of their lives. So that's millions of dollars on the individual heads of that company. I don't see how they'd be able to make that. So obviously, when it comes to this, what they ended up getting was actually, what was it? Um, I'll get to it here in a second. Well, well here, here it is right here. So on December 12th of 2012, just days after the humble THQ bundle ended, THQ filed Chapter 11 bankruptcy. So that's why I say, in, in theory, they were trying to raise enough money so they could avoid Chapter 13 and they go to Chapter 11. Reason why? Um, they did it with the hopes of selling THQ and all its assets to Clear Lake Capital Group. By doing that, they actually sell off basically the company and they don't owe anybody anything. That's what I mean by Chapter 11. Chapter 13 would have screwed everybody. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, so uh, Synergy Partners was going to handle the sale, and uh, that's what THQ was wanting to do. They were wanting to sell it to a specific person, which was uh, Clear, uh, Clear Lake Capital Group. That's what they were wanting to do. Unfortunately, the bid was denied by Judge Mary F. Walrath. It kind of sounds like, you know, it kind of sounds like Mike Tyson trying to say walrus. Walrath. Walrath. Anyway. It was instead decided to do an individual auction of THQ's assets that was held on January 22nd of 2013. The Homefront franchise was acquired by Crytek, Relic Entertainment and the rights to the video game franchise Warhammer 40,000 was sold to Sega, publishing rights to the Turtle Rock Studios and the WWE franchise were obtained by Take-Two Interactive. Ubisoft obtained THQ Montreal and the publishing rights to South Park The Stick of Truth, which I've played and beaten on the PC. A lot of fun, really weird, but still fun. <laughs> I sort of recommend it, sort of. If you're not into that kind of thing, I understand. <laughs> you know? Anyway, Volution and the rights to the Metro series was actually obtained by Koch Media. Koch. I don't know, is that a German company? I gotta check. I, uh, anyways, we're just gonna keep going with this. And the Nickelodeon game rights went to Activision, their competitor. Damn you! God damn you all to hell! Of course, creditors came up with some wild ass accusations, saying that the liquidation would actually benefit the management at THQ. This was abruptly shut down by Judge Walrath, um, saying that this was a ridiculous conspiracy theory. Now, the uh, liquidation of THQ actually affected other companies as well, considering how big THQ was. It actually sent a little bit of a ripple effect through the video game development um, uh, companies throughout the world. A British developer called Blitz Games Studios shut down in September of 2013. Their CEO, Philip Oliver, states the demise of THQ is the major reason for the downfall of their own studio. On June 12th of 2004, Nordic Games actually obtained the rights to the THQ trademark. This allowed them to be able to produce games under the name and logo. In August of 2016, the company was renamed to THQ Nordic as to make an effort to associate itself with the historic name brand. Now, as of right now, THQ Nordic is actually in the works on a Darksiders 3, if for those that are actually interested. It's due to be released in 2018. Now that does it for this retro gaming history video. Please let me know in the comments if you would love to see me cover any other topic in retro gaming history. I will definitely do it. Um, right now I'm running a little low on what I'm going to do, so I need to sit down and brainstorm on what else I'm going to talk about. Um, as far as I can tell, I'm probably going to do midway until I come up with something else. 
But if there is something specific, like a game series you guys really love that doesn't get enough attention, or even if it's a popular one you guys really love, I will cover it. Um, just let me know in the comments and I will get to you and reply to you as well. Now as always, don't forget to click that like button down below and if you haven't, please subscribe if you haven't done already. And as always, remember 22 and stay classy, bros. Continue.